Evening. It is 6 p.m. December 13th, and I'd like to open the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for this evening. I'd like to announce that this meeting is being televised live on local cable channel 8. If we could all rise to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, next, does anyone have a public comment regarding anything not related to any uh, agenda items tonight? If so, please check in with Mary Ann, and you can have three minutes to make your comment. Anybody in the audience have anything? Great. Thank you very much. Also, I will ask for public comment on each hearing tonight at the end of that presentation. Sometimes it may be in the middle, but historically we try to keep it for the end. So tonight we have four members sitting, um, so it's not going to be hard. I mean five, I'm sorry. Five members sitting. Some, some, if so, if we have anybody stepping down, that will make a situation where the applicant can make a decision whether he or, ch or she chooses to move forward. So it'll be the five, me, uh, five people sitting at this, uh, at this table here. So having said that, Charlie, would you read the first, I think, continued hearing? I will. Uh, continued hearings... Uh, for December 13th, 2023, uh, 48 Greenwood Road. Petitioners Joyce A. and Daniel Marsters request a variance under 17431 of the zoning bylaws to allow for construction of retaining walls on property located in the R3 zoning in Papanesset Overlay District, Map 117, Parcel 323, Mashpee Mass, owner of record, Joyce A. Masters as trustee of the Greenwood Trust. A letter has been received from the attorney dated November 30, 2023, requesting a withdrawal, and this will be read into the record. I have that letter dated November 30, 2023, to Ron Bovey, chairman of the Mashby Zoning Board of Appeals, from Christopher L. Corain, uh, relative to 48 Greenwood Road. Dear Mr. Bondi, it is requested that the applicants be permitted to withdraw their request for a variance without prejudice. Thank you in anticipation for your cooperation. Would you like to make a motion, Charlie, in reference to that letter? Yeah, um, move that the applicant be permitted to withdraw their request for a variance without prejudice. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Charlie, would you read the next continued hearing, please? I shall. The next continued hearing is 42 Wheeler Road. Owner Marcio De Jesus requests a special permit under 174.17.1 and 174.33 of the zoning bylaws to raise an existing single family dwelling and replace it with a new single family dwelling on property located in the R5 zoning district, map 57, parcel seven, Mashby, Mass. Continued from October 25th, 2023, November 8th, 2023, at the request of the attorney. Okay. Look at this. By golly. Boy, that's a nice long, thin line. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Christopher Corain, representing the applicant, Marcia De Jesus. Uh, he is the owner of property at 42 Wheeler Road. Uh, we have applied for uh, a special permit under 174-17.1 and 174-33 uh, to raise and replace the existing single-family dwelling and replace it with a new single-family dwelling. So. Uh, this is this lot's about 1.4 acres, which is uh, shy of the 80,000 required in the R5 zoning district. So we have a non-conforming lot. The structure itself, the structure that's being replaced, is non-conforming in only one aspect, and that's because it's 50 within 50 feet of the set the wet uh, the setback to the wetlands. So the structure that's proposed to be replaced, that is its only non-conformity. Now, there are some other structures on the, on the lot um, that are non-conforming. Uh, there's a, uh, a shed or structure that's 12 feet off, but as far as the structure that we're touching, that the only non-conformity is the setback to the wetlands. 
So what we're proposing is to basically um, <clears throat> replace it almost in kind. It is getting a little bit bigger. The existing lot coverage is 11.3%. The proposed lot coverage is 12.1%. There are no, wet, no flood zones, so there's no land side <coughs> of the coast storm flowage or no structure coverage, anything like that we need to worry about. We can look straight at, at the maximum lot coverage, which in the R5 is 20%. So again, 11.3 to 12.1. Uh, this project has been approved by the Conservation Commission. This project will be installing an IA system as part of the project. Um, we're moving a little bit further back from the wetland. Uh, we're not creating any new nonconformities. We're not intensifying any existing, but again, there are none uh, except for the wetland on, on this particular lot, so, or this particular structure. So um, pretty straightforward project in that regard. Happy to, uh, you know, dry wells will be installed. Um, so happy to answer any questions. What I'd like to do is, uh, Charlie, could you read any uh, letters into the, re into the record, please, from any boards or committees or anybody from the town? And I also want to add anything from Evan, please. Take your time. Okay. Uh, conservation, conservation Department comments, uh, Dan Kent, uh, for Wednesday, December 13th, relative to... Uh, Wheeler Road, 42 Wheeler Road. Uh, NOI application was approved unanimously by the Commission. Approved plan addresses driveway runoff concerns, mitigation plantings, septic upgrade to uh, IA, and structures are no closer to the resource area. Uh, 42 Wheeler Road, Board of Health, uh, received 1127 23. Uh, septic needs to upgrade to four bedroom septic, septic with IA technology. Uh, and do some building plans, John. I'm going to gas out some building plans. You take a look at those. Yep. There's a sheet of them right there. And I believe that's all I have. And I do not call. believe Evan gave any comments. So no comment because it was a prior. Continuum. All right, well, so that being said, board comments, please. I am passing around right now. Are you receiving some elevation from some build of a building? Do you want to get over that? Yep. Why don't we just spend a moment here and get caught up? So just for clarity, you're not creating any nonconformities. That's correct. You're actually reducing one nonconformity, which is wetland setback. Yeah. Um, and you are doing dry well. Yes. Doing the IA system. Yeah. Might as well just let the board review some plans. <laughs> no letters or emails from neighbors. Yeah. Well, nothing I, I, saw, I saw nothing else. I went through. Here is another set of conservation, public health. So do we have another set of plans? Okay, that's the height. Right. The height is approximately 23.8 feet, so well under well under your 35 allowed. 32.8, <coughs> I see that. Plan. You would tell us that anyway, right? Yes. Well, he wouldn't get by David, so. Right, exactly. He'll <laughs> right? It really doesn't matter at this point. I mean, <laughs> he'll certify that. Yeah. All right, well, as far as I'm concerned, um, board members have any questions? No. No, I'm comfortable. Any issues, comments? All right, let's go to the audience. Anyone in the audience have any issues, comments in reference to 42 Wheeler Road? Seeing none. All right, John, I'd like to get a motion to close the public hearing, please. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Like to get a motion in reference to the application, please. Got Mr. It. Morris is not here, so that's not. Relative that. to 42 Wheeler Road, make a motion. The owner, Marcio de Hayes, to Jesus requests a special permit under 174.17.1 and 174.33 of the zoning bylaws to raise an existing single family dwelling and replace it with a new single family dwelling on property located in the R5 zoning district, map 57, parcel 7, Mashpee, Mass, with the following conditions. Number one, the board has determined that the applicant meets all the conditions of a special permit under Mass General Laws 40A, Section 9. Two, site plan, 42 Wheeler Road, Mashpee, Mass, prepared for Marcio de Jesus, 
date 72423, scale one inch equals 20 feet. Drawn by SAP, revision date 101923 and 101023, HSE slash areas slash dwellings prepared by Collie Site Services, LLC. Three, building plans. 42 Wheeler Road, Mashpee, Mass, prepared for the Hayes Residence, 1-01. New house perimeter, 1-02. Layout first floor, 1-03. Layout second floor, 1-04. Front view, rear view, 1-05. Right view, left view, prepared by Pinheiro, Gutowski Interior Design. Condition on all town department comments read into the record, including but not limited to the Conservation Department and Board of Health. Excuse me. Any changes to the plans will require the applicant to return to this board. The board finds that the application as submitted is not substantially more detrimental than what existed prior to removal of the existing structure and that there is adequate land area to provide sufficient parking and there are no new non-conformities being created. And I'd just like to add to that a little bit with the submission. Yes, and I have a question when you're done. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and furthermore, uh, under seven, that the new construction will comply with more current building code criteria. An updated IA system is being proposed. There are no new non-conformities being created. Lot coverage will be under the maximum allowed of 20%. The project has been approved by the Conservation Commission. Substantial mitigation replanting is proposed and approved. Dry wells are proposed to capture on-site stormwater, and the proposal is consistent with redevelopment in the neighborhood. Well done, and you did the right thing. Nice. Um, if I may ask one question, please. Um, is there any input from the fire department, the length of this driveway? I'm not, if he didn't. Yeah, I got a response from Joe Kelly, but he said no comments. Okay, I'll second. Yep. Do I have a motion? Oh, he made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Here you go. That was that dry one. Over. <coughs> Ooh, thank you. There you go, Jonathan. <coughs> I get an easy one. I see. Hmm. You can take that too. Long. Thank you. He's going back. Yes, sir. Whoa. Yeah. All right. A lot of paper here. The 13th, right? Yeah. There you go. Sign all this stuff all the time? Absolutely. It's part of the deal. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> Charlie, would you please read the fir the next or first new hearing, please? I shall. <clears throat> new hearings for December 13, 2023, uh, 31 Birch Way. Owners Gary J. and Denise M. Nagel request a written finding under 174.17 of the zoning bylaws to allow for reconstruction of an existing garage and porch addition to a pre-existing non-conforming structure on property located in an R5 zoning district, map 27, parcel 86, Mashby, Mass. The subject property has the following pre-existing non-conformities. Minimum lot area, Minimum, yard, minimum side yard setback and setback to water and wetlands. The board will determine whether or not the proposed garage reconstruction 
and Ports addition will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood as required prior to taking any action on the request for a written finding. The subject lot size is 18,397 square feet, where 80,000 square feet is required. The southwestern corner of the subject property is 12.3 feet from the side lot line, where 15 feet is required. And the northeastern corner is 14.6 feet from the side lot line. Additionally, the existing deck is built within the 50-foot buffer to water and wetlands. The applicant does not propose any increases to the existing nonconformities on the subject property. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Mike Kanata. How are you? Hi, good. Representing. Yeah, so it's, it's a pretty straightforward project. It is a pre-existing nonconforming uh, dwelling, and he's exactly right in saying that we're not uh, proposing any further nonconformities. We want to put back basically what was there. And the, the issues that we're having with this house is it was built, uh, I believe, in the 70s. And uh, the garage and breezeway section um, underneath it was buried uh, tons of stumps. And that part of the building was built on these stumps. So now subsequent 30 some odd years later, the stumps have rotted and the building is now unstable. So this. This is not uh, a project that was um, kind of born by desire. It was born more by necessity. Um, so we have to take down that garage and breezeway section and excavate out all of the wood pulp that's underneath it all and bring back compacted fill and put back the garage and breezeway right where it stands. The only footprint change that's being proposed is on the left side of the building with you back to the street, which is currently right now a, a paver walkway, and she wants to have a little four-foot covered roof deck to enter the front door. And that's on the left side of the building, which is not uh, the non-conforming side. So the lot line on the right, the 12.3, <coughs> is the one that's the closest, and we're going to be put back exactly what's there. Um, so we're not increasing the conformity. It's, it's still under the 20% uh, rule. Um, the calculations are 17.4 uh, is where we're at. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's um, you know, a problem, but I'll let you guys tell me if you have any questions. Well, it's pretty, I... pretty straightforward. We're just trying to fix a problem that's there that, you know, is the, the building has dropped five and a half inches. Yeah, from where it was, uh, and the, the uh, so foundations completely separated from the you're, old. You're not, you're not going any, creating any nonconformity. No. Oh, even the, even the left side. No, I, I actually wasn't even sure I had to come for, before you guys, but um, the building inspector Dave said I, I needed to come before you. I said we're not, we're not proposing any more nonconformities, so uh, we just got to take out what's there and put back what's there. Charlie, would you read any so, uh, any uh, input from other boards or committees? Yeah, and I have. Evan, <coughs> let me just make sure I have them all. Take your time. <coughs> and Evan's comments, recommendations, I'd say, is a better way to put it. Okay, there's a notification from Dan Kent uh, from uh, Conservation, dated December 8, 2023, relative to 31 Birch Way. RDA application received, a negative determination voted unanimously by the Commission. Just go on. Uh, Board of Health uh, received 1127.23 uh, to remain three bedroom. And DPW comments uh, from uh, Catherine Laurent, dated 1129.23. Uh, uh, 31 Birchway is a town road. While no modifications to the existing paved driveway are proposed, currently stormwater runoff from the property flows to the road. At a minimum, I request that any approval be conditioned upon installation of gutters, downspouts, and drywells on the new garage and porch to address the roof runoff. If you were to make a motion, please include that. I will do that. And... I believe that's all I have. And then you would just read Evan's recommendations, please. Now, uh, commensurate with uh, 
his position uh, as Community Development Director uh, on December 6, 2023, um, to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals from Evan Lara uh, were his comments relative to his review of the material that has been submitted on behalf of, of the petitioner. And the, just make sure, the recommend, and his recommendation uh, is the planning department suggests that the proposed continuance extension or alterations proposed would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than existed previously, and that the board can grant a written finding Please be mindful of a potential lot coverage nonconformity and ensure, if it exists, that the nonconformity is considered in your deliberation and motions. And I would like to state after you reading that that this board should take that into consideration as recommendation, but this board is not bound by that recommendation. Okay, do we have any other? I have uh, nothing else in writing from anybody that I'm aware I'll of. open up here. questions to the board. Just explain the negative so so NOI, NOI na notice of intent, notice of, so a negative determination means that you file enough information to the Conservation Commission to make a decision, you're after this, you do not have to file a notice of intent, you, you satisfy the requirements for the, for the, for the Conservation <coughs> Commission, and you're all set to move forward. It's a shortcut to a to a conservation full filing, and it is a process that you want negative, not positive. Positive would mean you would have to go back to conservation with a full filing of a notice of intent. Correct. But in this case, they get a negative determination of applicability, and that means I have enough, inf I'm conservation, I have enough information, I'm happy with your filing, move forward. <clears throat> it's, so you want to have a negative determination in that case. It's good for the applicant. Mm -hmm. Which is rare. <laughs> well, I think in this case, the Conservation Commission looked at it, and there was a couple things. Uh, there was no vegetation to be removed, none, none proposed. Um, the existing dwelling that uh, blocks the work zone or is a buffer from the work zone to the uh, top of the inland bank, and that's where the conservation is most concerned. And we're not proposing any work on that side of the building. We're all on the street side. The bottom side. line is conservation yeah. has stated the following. Shortcut procedure, you're okay. Right. <laughs> and, and for the record, uh, regarding the downspouts, um, that was conservation's uh, request as well. That was one yeah, condition so they put. So if there were a motion that made, it. it would have to include that. So you're going to have to amend this plan yep. and depict those. Okay. And my concern is what what size storm do you design to, and what do you use? Do you use uh, do you use uh, DEP or what's criteria? For the for the dry wells themselves, yeah. I I use the um, the um, flow wells. With, okay. And I dig them in with an excavator, and I over dig them. I fill them with crushed stone. And so you don't know what size storm you would design to, though? Whether it's 50, 25 year, 5 year, oh, whatever? No, and, and honestly, I'd only be catching, unless, unless the areas of the house where I'm not doing any work, you're proposing that I need to put dry wells in those areas. Well, no, I think the DPW it's only director stated, now I could be wrong, but the new garage that you're rebuilding needs to have dry wells to catch the water from that location. That's all she said. And so yeah. that being said, you would have to put in, I'm not going to design it, but you'd have to show us a design. So what, why don't you do this, if it's okay with the board. If you were to obtain an approval tonight, mm -hmm. resubmit a design that I will take a quick look at if it's okay, and then we can just approve without having come back to the full board. Is that all right? That's and fine. And I'll sign off on that. Fine. So just make sure it's adequate size. I'll do a calculation quickly. I can do a drainage calculation. Okay. And so just over design, not under design. I want to be able to say to DPW <coughs> director that we're reducing quantity of water leaving the site. Right. So, okay. So you need the dimensions of the garage, I would guess. You want yeah. the square area, the roof area being proposed. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you just want to over design that yeah. criteria. Yeah. Please. Well, well make that part of the condition. Yes, please. The, uh, so yeah. And, and I think I'm just asking this board if it's okay. I'll stop in and see Marianne once you do that. I'll sign off on it if it meets the criteria. Okay. And that way you can move forward. And we then satisfy DPW. And if the <clears throat> board sees fit to make a motion and approve your application tonight, you don't have to come back to the board. Perfect. Sounds great. Does that make sense, guys? That's okay. fine. Any other questions from the board? Um, there is one question that Evan is raising, and that is, I don't know if you heard in his request, and that was, 
the potential lot coverage nonconformity will and in, ensure if it exists that no non new nonconformity is considered in your deliberation. So, um, are there any nonconformities such as wetlands, lot coverage? Is there anything? Because you are adding on to the left hand side of the house. Yeah, no, we're still under the 20 percent. Even with even with the calculation, in. remember you cannot use any land subject to flooding or anything under jurisdiction of conservation. Correct. In that calculation. That's correct. Well, look at look at this. How much it goes up. Well, I get it, but he's saying 20 percent. So if it's one percent, he's over the 20 percent. You're it goes from are you what? saying you're at 20 percent? Oh now? no, no, I'm at 17.4. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm at right. 17. I'm well under the 20 percent. Okay. As the building stands right now, I believe it's 16.8 or something. Well, I just I have he's it on pointing me. out. Please be mindful of a potential lot coverage nonconformity. Yep. So that says to me, I want to look at that, and you sh and you're yeah, saying to me, you've you've taken into consideration when you've calculated that 17. Uh, yeah, I'm looking point four. <clears throat> you have removed the wetland area up against Mashby Pond when mm -hmm. you've used that calculation. I'm looking at the engineering plan uh, right in front of me, and it says house, garage, porch, decks, and stairway, 17.4%. Right, but my question is, is did your engineer take out when he was calculating that 17.4 the land that conservation has jurisdiction over, which is all that land that has a steep slope leading down to Mashby yeah, Pond? So you can't use that in your calculation. Right. So this is I, very important. I know what you're saying. So that uh, question that was raised by Evan, um, I did talk to my engineer about that, and he said if we took that uh, BBW area out, we'd be at 17.8. So it's still well under. So you need to correct this document then, because this is cl this is depicting that you're at 17.4, yeah. when in fact you're at 17.8. Well. He was unaware of that rule, which I thought was yeah. kind, of, kind of un... un it is a remand. It's a finding by a judge, right. and that judge has decided that yeah. we as a board in overseeing mm -hmm. that specific issue, we, yeah. need, we cannot take into... Any applicant cannot take in utilize right. the land that conservation has jurisdiction over in reference to law. So this document was already done prior to right. that. And so I saw that letter, which just came to my email the other day. Well, that can... And so when he does the dry well, I'll show the dry well, I'll have him adjust the percentage uh, and back that out and show it, and I'll resubmit that. The dry wells. So now I have a question of the board, and that is, you know where it's coming, and that is, we have two issues that have to. This plan has to be amended. I think it should come back. I think so. Too. I think so too. I think so. And just to show both of that one plan. Here's what we're saying. Here's what I'm reading from this board, um, because we have that issue, and we have the dry well issue. Um, we're, to ask, we're going to ask you for an extension till the next meeting, and then you to resubmit the plan, correct it. If okay. it was just a dry well, you might have, but when you get into the other one, we have been remanded and asked to be very careful and reference the law coverage. It's very important. Okay, so I, I need to come back again. Am I reading that right, board members? Yeah. Right. Okay. And I think what we're saying is that everything is fine when we get that new plan back with those. Yeah, plans. I just, I'm not clear why the submitting the plan, uh, the submitting the plan corrected is it's going to satisfy what your question is. It sounds are. So, like to me, so I'm correct me if I'm wrong, board members, with a correctly submitted plan that's lot coverage, taking into consideration any wetlands issues, and um, the issue with the um, dry well issue, if those issues are dealt with on this plan and he resubmits, he shouldn't have any other issues. I agree with that. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. This All right. When's the next meeting? That I can. January. And Ron, is it. Just the percentage that has to be put on the plan that we don't have now? That's correct. That, so it's, that's wrongly, really it. it's wrongly calculated. So yeah. we have a plan that, that depicts something that's incorrect. And, but the resubmission we, without coming here isn't sufficient? No. Okay. No. Um, we've been recommended. We've, we've, we've been told more than once that we should have finished plans. I can bend that rule a little bit when it comes to a drainage structure not on a plan. Yeah. But when you get into lock coverage, it's taking it over the top. That being said, uh, when is the next meeting? January 10th. Would you like to request a, a continuance until January 10th? 
Yeah, I want to come back as soon as possible. I've so already be January 10th. So you were asking for an extension, right? Yes, sir. So would someone like to make a motion that we accept the continuance until January 10th, please? I move that we accept the continuance requested to January 10th for submission of the plan and uh, hearing before the board. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. There you go. Okay. So. Charlie, am I over uh, over utilizing your services here tonight? Because I know I get you going six ways to Sunday. Hey, talk is cheap. I can do it. If you want, I can have someone no, no, else I'm, read I'm, it. I mean, I'm fine. I'm all right. I don't. I I don't want you leaving here all tired up. You know. Yeah. Keeps the mind active, Ron. Okay. Listen, um, Charlie, would you like to read their the next new submittal, please, or I'm application? I'm delighted. Okay. Uh, 33 Sunset Circle, owners Kevin and Suzanne C. Mulgrew, trustees of the 33 Sunset Circle Realty Trust, request a written finding under 174.17 of the zoning bylaws to allow for reconstruction and extension of an existing deck to a pre-existing non-conforming structure on property located in an R5 zoning district, map, map 64, parcel 28, Nashby, Mass. The subject property has the following pre-existing non-conformities. Minimum lot area Oops. and setback to water and wetlands. The board will determine whether or not the proposed deck extension will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood as required prior to taking action on the request for the written finding. The subject lot size is 18,640 square feet, where 80,000 square feet is required. The existing structure is more or less bisected by the 50-foot buffer line from water and wetlands, and the entire deck proposed to be rebuilt is totally within the 50-foot setback to water and wetlands. The applicant proposes to add 686 square feet to the overall deck area, increasing the non-conforming nature of the setback to water and wetlands by six feet. Additionally, the applicant proposes to add an additional 80 square feet of deck area to the northerly side within the setback to water and wetlands. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex. I am a contractor. I represent uh, Kevin and Susan Mulgrew. So what we're trying to do is uh, the existing deck is in a very poor condition and uh, it's very unsafe. So uh, it needs to be completely rebuilt. Uh, the size of the deck, uh, which is only 10 feet wide, is not, um, it's not uh, following the purpose uh, what they're trying to use it for. Uh, this is the reason why we're asking to extend only one portion of the deck and to make it overall 16 by 16. So by increasing one side only six feet towards the water. And we already went through the conservation. We got an approval from them. Um, we're using all the existing sonotubes. tubes. Uh, we're only adding two. And uh, lot coverage uh, is well under 20%. I believe it's 12.3. Got it. Is that your submittal? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, is this plan? I believe we're looking at That's why it's going to Yeah. Sally, could you read Good. comments from various boards and committees and Evan's recommendation, please? I would do that. Thank you, sir. <coughs> yes, proposed rebuild that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> proceed December 8th, 2023, from here. Dan Kent, Conservation. 33 Sunset Circle NOI application was approved unanimously by the commission with the condition of a drywell installed and diamond pier footing for deck footings in the island bank. And from the uh, Board of Health, 33 Sunset Circle received 112723. Board of Health, no habitable space 
uh, no habitable space, no comment, and relative to the recommendation from uh, Evan Lara, uh, which I believe is December 8th of 2023 recommendation. Um, the planning department suggests that the proposed continuance extension or alterations proposed would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than existed previously and that the board can grant a written finding. This recommendation is made solely because the expanded deck area that increases the setback to water and wetland stone conformity is over a portion of the lot previously disturbed with a set of stairs. Please be mindful of a potential lot coverage nonconformity and ensure, if it exists, that the nonconformity is considered in your deliberation and motions. Yes. Okay, so again, I will state it is uh, in the best interest of certainly our town and community that we read Evan's um, recommendations into the record. Again, it is the board's decision in the ultimate end, and we have, we, we have a right to make our own decision based on that. But I see what Evan is pointing out, and that is that the decks that you're wanting to add are increasing the nonconformity to John's Pond because of setback to Welland. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. And secondly, and this, this concerns me as much, if not actually more, and that is how do we know that lot coverage, as we had in the prior at a previous application, is calculated the correct way? Unless we actually see numbers on a plan on this sheet showing that he's not he or she is not utilizing land subject to flooding and under jurisdiction of conservation. Yeah, you, you know, see, see my point. See. I mean, you know, you see proposed lot coverage fourteen point eight. I get it. So that falls with that's not non conform. That is conforming. I get it. Mm -hmm. But does it include the entire Jeez. lot? Right. And, and he could be an out-of-town engineer that doesn't understand the remand that we had from the judge saying that you cannot use that square footage. Yeah, it's you, the same argument we just had with the last guy. That yeah, the engineer is local. Five minutes ago. Yeah, no, I know. We know, Mr. Hood. I, I get that. I'm just, I'm bringing this up as an issue that's come to my head in that if we have an engineer that's new to our community, may not be this situation, mm -hmm. and he, he or she gives us lot coverage based on structures on a lot and does not and uses um, the conservation properties, uh, land that conservation has jurisdiction over, in its computation incorrectly so. We do not know that because mm -hmm. we, we don't see his calculations. That's my concern. All right, so... Let's see where it goes. But minimally, minimally, you're going to have to request, in my opinion, subject to this board's input, some type of relief because you are actually getting closer to the wetlands mm -hmm. than your, so your nonconformity is going to increase. Yes. So something. at the water line, it's 40 feet? And at the deck, it's what, 45? I see all these lines. So those are grade so lines. Yeah, it tells me that it's a steep grade. It, 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 the closer it, they're together, the steeper it is. So what we have to do is back up land subject to flowage, coastal flowage, right? Yes. This so, is John's Pond. Right. I'm just, I don't see so, the, yes, yeah, so I don't see the real lot line. You see the 50 foot buffer line? Yeah. That's this line right here. So that's 50 feet off of it, but where is his lot line in the rear? And where is the actual, what? It's where is a it? dotted line, I believe. BBW right there is 02. Morning is 101, see that? Is that line there? Yeah. So there is part of this lot is in the resource area. So that means whatever engineer did this cannot use lot area, meaning, no, cannot use lot square footage. I have to watch my language, lot square footage in its totality, in computating lot coverage, he has to reduce, or she, has to reduce the lot area by the land that is under conservation jurisdiction and then use the lot coverage computation. Which okay. is everything 
closer to the water from the BVW. Correct, of water, water, veg, veg, bordering vegetated wetlands, correct. All that has got to be taken out. Right. And it actually should be listed twice. Once that includes it, and once that doesn't include yeah. it. So that's so one that thing. Know that there's a difference. We need this clarification. That's something that has to go to our comments at the next meeting. It's imperative because we have applicants, Ben being tried, making applications that we do not know are following that criteria or not. Right. Should list both. Right. It should say, yeah, <clears throat> proposed lot coverage, including maybe be, you know, land subject to conservation jurisdiction and excluded. That way we know. That it's taken into effect. Right. What we're finding is that the engineers who deal with the town mm -hmm. with frequency understand that, and when they submit the plan, they show both of the numbers to us so that we know that it's taken into consideration. And I know Mr. Hood has been in front of this board before. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, though, that he is aware of this situation. Okay. Because he's not coming in front of the board as much as other local engineers may have come. And my point is, he may not have taken that into consideration. And okay. that concerns me. I uh, will uh, definitely address what that. What I'd like to do then at this point is go to the audience. Anyone in the audience have any input on in this application? Okay, seeing none. Um, so when you come back, make sure that all of it's listed. And let's assume for argument that the 14.8% includes the entire lot, even land With conservation owned, jurisdiction. that's got BVW. Mm -hmm. So if so, that's the case, that 14.8 should go, is probably gonna go up. Yeah, probably whatever the number is. 16, 17, I don't know. Whatever the number is. And if in this zone maximum is 20, you certainly don't wanna go over that. So that's, that should all be listed on this plan. Okay. And then secondly, you need to understand what your wetland, what your setback from BVW or any conservation jurisdictional land is, is from your improvements. So that this board understands that you're getting closer to those resource areas by X amount of feet, then we can make a decision on that. Okay. Right now, you cannot see that on the plan. It just says proposed rebuilt deck, but it doesn't say distance to resource area. That could be a BVW, it could be flood, plan, it could be anything, land, um, subject, land subject to place. So yeah, so we need to understand what that dimension is. And if it is getting close to this board's gonna have to make a decision because you're expanding a, non, a pre existing right. nonconformity. Possibly. We don't know. Yep, okay. I'll, I'll get that. Slammed. <laughs> Wait, well, I think it's going to only get more and more like that. But do you do you have total clarity in this? Yes, we don't I want do. him just. Yes. Okay. Um, you can have Mr. Hood give a call to Marianne if, in fact, he has any questions. And Marianne, if I have to, I'll call him. I, it doesn't matter to me. I just I just want to make sure you're clear on our request. No, no, I do understand exactly what you want. Okay. I already made all the notes. So. All right. So would you like to ask a uh, for a continuance? Yes, I do. Until Marianne. I would love to. All right. Okay. Uh, motion relative to 33 Sunset Circle uh, to continue the hearing through January 10th, uh, where it'll be presented with the uh, new plan to the board. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I was doing Aye. something different. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Guys. Look forward to seeing you on January 10th. Yep. So how do I get the word out of this? Anything to say? No, nothing to sign. Charlie, would you read the next new application, 29 Riverside, please? I shall do that. The next application is uh, 29 Riverside Road. Owners Russell J. and Ann E. Spencer request a special permit under 170 War 17.1 of the zoning bylaws to raise a pre existing non conforming single family dwelling and replace it with a new single-family dwelling on property located in an R3 zoning district map 119 parcel 81, Mashby, Mass. The subject property has the following pre-existing non-conformities. Minimum side yard setback, lot coverage, and setback to water and wetlands. The board will determine 
whether or not the proposed replacement building has adequate parking, that any non-conforming aspects of the replacement dwelling are not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Thank you, Charlie. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Christopher Corain representing Russell and Ann Spencer, uh, owners of 29 Riverside Road. Um, I am going to ask for a continuance to January 24th uh, for two reasons. One is you only have four voting members. The other reason is is that uh, unfortunately we've received some conflicting information and this morning we were advised that uh, conservation does have jurisdiction to review this project <coughs> and uh, therefore, you know, based on this board's um, policy, so to speak, that, uh, you know, we get those approvals before being heard on this one. It's uh, having having the applicant state that, so we want to put in the record that Jonathan has chosen to step down for this application. All right, so you are asking for an extension until what date, please? January 24th, I believe, is your next meeting. Does right. that work? That, the second one in yeah. January, yes. So is it January 24th? Charlie, would you like to make that motion, please? Sure. Relative to 29 Riverside Road, uh, the request is made by motion to continue the hearing from this evening until January 24th. Uh, 2024 um, with uh, new information obtained between now and then. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Uh, could someone tell Jonathan? He's come back in, right? Send it. There you go. Okay. Charlie, would you please read the next application, which is 90 Papanasset Island? I shall. Uh, 90 Papanasset Island Road. Um, <clears throat> owner Brendan P. Giblin requests a special permit under 174.17.1 of the zoning bylaws to raise a pre existing non conforming residential structure and replace it with a new single family residential structure with associated pool and attached garage with guest suite above on property located in an R3 zoning district, map 106, parcel 34, Mashby, Mass. The pre-existing non-conforming dwelling is located entirely in the flood zone. The board will determine whether or not the proposed replacement dwelling has adequate parking and that any non-conforming aspects are not uh, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and that there are no new nonconformities being created. The existing property has the following three existing nonconformities. Lot area, setback to water and wetlands and lot coverage. The subject lot size is 20,421 square feet where 40,000 square feet is required. However, the lot is entirely within the flood zone and currently has no upland area. The existing structure is within the 50-foot setback to water and wetlands noting approximately 37.5 feet to the coastal bank. The new proposed dwelling generally increases the intensity of the water and wetland setback nonconformity. The lot is currently covered with structures totaling 1,274 square feet. The applicant proposes replacement structures totaling 3,243 square feet, thus increasing the intensity of the lot coverage nonconformity. Thank you, Charlie. I have a letter, right? Yes. Um, want me to read it? Sure. What do you want? <laughs> I can tell you exactly. So okay. I am I, not going forward tonight. I've asked for a continuance. Well, the reason for that is, is that um, this project is currently uh, before DEP. Uh, there's a correspondence from, uh, I believe, Greg De Desaire, uh, who indicated on November 22nd that he needed about 30 days to issue, potentially issue a, a superseding order of conditions. So uh, without that, I don't want this board to, you know, I don't, you know, this board, will, you know, generally wouldn't make any decision until that DEP decision comes, comes through. So you are going to hereby request an extension? I am. Until? Uh, I would like January 10th. We expect that. Per his letter, we're expecting it, but why don't we go, I will defer to the board. To, uh, the following one. Yeah. All right, so Just that's... Just in case. Sure. Not that we're slammed on the I agenda. Understood. Charlie, would you like to make that motion, please? Sure. Relative to uh, 90 uh, Papanasset 
Island Road. A uh, motion is made to continue the hearing from this evening until January 24th, 2024, um, in anticipation of receiving new information. Right. Do I have a second? Second. All those favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yep. Okay. So you might as well remain in the seat. I think yep. 37, Nick, make it uh, part of the record, please, that Jonathan is stepping down in this, yep. I guess, I think. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Councilor, are you submitting? I have, I just have one. I, I just talked about the time. So, made a mistake. what requires someone to leave the room? Um, I've, town council in this town states that if you feel you're in conflict, you leave the room. So, if you have any feeling that you're in conflict in your own mind, yeah, you okay. should leave the room. And, the, and everybody has varying opinions it of that. It doesn't mean whether you know or you don't know somebody, it means whether you can decide it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's up to you. It's, I mean, he's making a decision. He lives by his decision. Yeah. If somebody brings up this issue someday, he's going to defend it. Yeah. So. so, Charlie, would you like to read the next? Or did you just read? 30, would you like to read? I could. There were two more. Nick Trail. Yeah. yeah. So Excellent. please think, read 37 Nick Trail into the record. Yep. Yeah. All right. Nick Trail. Uh, 37 Nick Trail. Owners Brian J. and Karen F. Kelleher request a variance from 17431, special footnote 12 of the zoning bylaws to allow for separation of a merged lot shown on assessor's map 117, parcel 300, and located in both the R3 and Papanesset overlay districts, map 117, parcel 300, Mashby, Mass. The relief is requested because the entity, entirety of the subject property is in the flood zone. And while the lot currently has enough land area and frontage to divide, its flood zone status prevents division without relief. The board will consider whether or not there is a unique lot shape, topographical condition, or soil condition that necessitates relief pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 10. Approval of the relief requested would not effectuate division of the subject lot. If, appro if approved, the applicant will need to seek endorsement by the planning board of a plan believed not to require approval under the subdivision control law. <coughs> Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, Attorney Christopher Corain. Um, I am going to request a continuance to the <coughs> January 24th uh, so that I can present this before five members. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Charlie, would you like to okay, make any motion? Again, relative to 37 Nick Trail, at the request of council and the applicants, it is requested that the hearing uh, on this property be continued from tonight to January 24th. Great. Thank you. Have a motion. Do I have a second on that? Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. All right, we have one left. On we have one left. Let me get. And I see no one in the audience. Oh, Chris is going to present. Place there's no receipt. Yeah, that's yeah, no, so yeah. as far as asking. Okay. I didn't want to. No, I. I mean, I know. I know. I just. I know. Didn't want to be. Come. Would come to change. It's kind of a funny thing. <laughs> come on, you know what are you doing? That's nice. No. It is. Charlie, <laughs> would you like to read the next or the last? Next and the last. I would be happy to read the next and last. Uh, relative to 29 Echo Road and 41 Echo Road. Petitioner 3M Ventures, Inc., DBA Triple M Management Company, LLC, requests a modification under 17424C9CE of the zoning bylaws and condition number five of the special permit decisions, SP201533, SP201936, SP22028, uh, MOD 2023-08 to extend the date for completion of construction from its previously extended date of December 31, 2023 to May 31, 2024 
on property located in the I-1 and light industry overlay zoning districts, map uh, 19, parcels 3-8 and 3-9, Mashpee Mass, owner of record, Triple M Management Company, LLC. Good evening again. For the record, Attorney Christopher Crane uh, representing Triple M uh, Mashby. Uh, this is a request for a, a extension of the existing special permit to May 31st. Uh, the board may recall we were here about six months ago uh, to request the extension to uh, the board allowed an extension to December 31st. We were debating back and forth whether to extend that further, but there were some concerns raised by the fire department. So the board. Um, you know, felt more comfortable giving the extension only till today and, uh, you know, have, making sure that my clients, when they, if they needed to come back, which they do, that they consulted with the fire department. Um, and so we are here again. My understanding is, is that the fire department has been consulted. I don't see anybody from the fire department and I believe if there was an issue, they would have been here. Um, but I don't know if there's any comments. I'm hopeful that, uh, that they were fine with it, everything. Um, I do apologize. I know I gave the board some information this morning. I, I, it wasn't substantive. It was just to give the board an idea of what's going on. What's naughty, happening. naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it again. No, I won't. <laughs> um, but it wasn't anything other than really just say, you know, we are making progress and this is, we, we're, we should be able to be done. I, I would just like to state this. I was very concerned at the last meeting and I depicted that. Um, and I'm also a little concerned that our zoning enforcement officer in here, because he was a taken back too, right. uh, about some other some issues that he had. Right. So I remain concerned. I did not look in the uh, in the folder. Do we have something from concept from uh, fire department? No. I don't think. Uh, I don't think we have anything yeah. from anybody. I got to tell you, I'm enticed to do the following to extend to our next meeting. I don't want to put you in default, but I've got to get something from oh, the fire department I'm, here I'm and from the zoning enforcement officer. I stand corrected. Th oh. Thanks, George. Yep. Uh, we have from the uh, uh, Catherine Laurent uh, from the DPW. department. Yeah. Uh, relative to 29 Echo Road and 41 uh, Echo Road. Echo Road is a town road. While the original project did receive a cub cut permit from the DPW, this permit has expired. Since then, an issue has arisen with the turning radius for the driveway aprons. The radius is too short slash abrupt, so vehicles and large trucks entering or exiting the property cut the corner. This is causing a pothole at each corner and will eventually break down the edge of the pavement for Echo Road. I request that any approved extension be conditioned upon the widening of the paved turning radius for each entrance and exit for the properties within the next six months. Well, that's, that's, some, that's something we can deal with, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a problem extending to the next available time to be heard, but I need to hear from I need to hear from the fire department, and I frankly need to hear from the zoning enforcement officer. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to speak for either of those parties. I, I talked to David. I don't think that he would have an issue with it. Um, the fire department, they were they were absolutely consulted on yeah, this. So, okay. but I agree. I, and, I, I mean, I this was this is a hot topic, yeah. and frankly, I just as a chair, I can't I can't see this thing moving forward. And I certainly am I'm not trying to put you in a default right. situation. I have no problem asking for an extension, you know, asking the board to make a motion to extend until some day certain so that we can hear back from those two sure. people. Um, and I presume we could, if the motion were to be made, we could condition it on DPW's issue, but not hearing from those two people concerns me. Oh. And that's fair enough. I'm, as right. long as the board is willing to. How about to the end of January? Because you. Yeah, that's can fine. you come back on the 24th? I can, so if the yeah. board were to agree to extend to extend the time for completion to January 31st, then I'll be back on the 24th to, to request an additional extension. Sense. You, you can clean up the yeah. DPW. Okay. You're, you're clear. Well, so something from, from Fire Department saying we're happy and something from David saying he's happy. Yeah, so the only thing I would ask from the board procedurally I should be filing a new application for an extension from the 31st to May 30, from January 31st, because you're granting me the modification till X date, yes. and then it's going to expire, so I need another modification. 
Well, hold it. So we're, we're mod we will agree to a modification of special permit tonight until January 31. Right. And then um, what happens is when I usually get close to expiration, I file a new request for a modification. So I'll have to do that from February 1st to May 31st. Are you better off just leaving the date of May 31st? In there? Well, I, the board, that's not what I'm hearing from the board. It's, yeah, it's, no. it's running out yeah. right. at the end of the year. I, I don't know how to fix your <laughs> issue. So the question is, Ron doesn't want to make a Good. determination till we hear from these yeah, two parties. I guess parties. the question is, does the, does the board need a formal request for a modification? Because every time I do this, I file a formal request for modification. I'm okay with the following. If you're asking for an extension until January 31, I'm asking going to ask for a motion to be made. Between now and the 31st, you know what you need to do. At that point in time, I'm prepared. Once those people are satisfied entirely, I'm willing as chair to say make a motion to extend appropriately. Okay. And you'll know that yeah. probably. Sure. I mean, you'll know they, the answer in two weeks. Right? They're going to say we love it, but right. the but's going to be a problem. I can tell you, it's no, got to be we love it, and yeah. I'm from both aspects right. of that. And you know, the rest of it can be conditioned. I believe, I, you know, that's relatively easy, but. I cannot condition on something I'm not aware of. No, no, I, I, I'm not, and I'm not asking. I'm just looking yeah. at just a procedural guidance. We'll, I'll work with you procedurally okay. wise. I mean, I get it. I just, uh, I, I just can't go. No, no, and I just said. All right, fair so enough. Charlie, would you please so, make a motion in reference to January 31? But we're not having any conditions relative to that. We're only that extending his. We're extending his. Okay. We're extending his special permit yep. until. Uh, uh, or, do you want to extend the permit? Or do you want to extend the decision making of that permit? I need to extend the, the completion date in what, right. section five, whatever right. it is, to January 31st. Exactly. There you go. So we're going to extend condition right. number five until January 31st, All right. 2024. We're sure it's number five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, well, you might. Be. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of important, Counselor. <laughs> it is. Let us okay. see what uh, <laughs> That would hurt. <laughs> the motion relative to. <clears throat> Yes, it numbers is condition 49 number five. and 41 Echo Road. Petitioner 3M Ventures Inc., DBA Triple M Management Company, LLC, requests a modification under 17424C9CE of the zoning bylaws in condition number five of the special permit decision, SP 2015 33, SP 2019 36, SP 2020 28. MOD 2023-08 to extend the date for completion of construction from its previously extended date of December 31st, 2023 to January 31, 2024 on property located in the I-1 and light industry overlay zoning districts, map 19, parcels 3-8 and 3-9, Mashby Mass, owner of record, Triple M Management Company, LLC, with the following conditions. The board accepts the request for a modification of the special permit under 17424C9CE of the zoning bylaws and condition number... We're extending. We're sorry, we're go ahead, continue. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you need what you... Go ahead, I'm yeah. sorry, I don't want to... Uh, interrupt. And condition number five of the decisions, SP 2015-33, SP 2000... 1936 SB 220-28, MOD 2023-08, to extend the date for completion of construction from its previously extended date of December 31st, 2023, to January 31st, 2024. Is that? I think that it works. works. That's all right? It works. Yeah, I think yeah. that's fine. All right. It, it works. It's probably it's, covered too much, but that's, that's okay. fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so I have a second in that motion, second. please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Please get everybody to say they love you. I will. I, I was hoping that I was going to have that, but I know David had uh, some... Uh, help us help you. I know. David had some mental work today, so... I, I just don't want... They love you, but... I don't want <laughs> There's an extension to his, his number five condition until January 30. 2023. Just, just numbers five. Well, that's the only thing that's, that permits in jeopardy with. Right, exactly. The rest of it stands. Right. So we extended number five because it lapsed in December of 31. So we extended it until January 31. So you don't need to come back. 
No, oh, he's coming back January 31. Extended from the 31st of January to May 31st. Yeah, he has to come back to this board before January 31. Where any one of those meetings. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll yeah. make sure that we're offered. He will contact you. He will probably be asked to be put on the agenda January 20. I know, but that's up to him. He will proceed that. He will. He will oversee that. I'm sure. All right, so I think there's a motion. Uh, do we have a motion to approve minutes? I don't know. I don't have one. Be. There we do. If there isn't, so moved. <laughs> if there isn't, jolly, I love it. Yeah, all in favor, right? So let's see. Approved minutes dated November 8, 2023. I'd like to have a motion. So moved. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right, just we'll, additional, just at the event, hopefully next meeting we're going to have our new guidelines for submittal. I'm asking um, <coughs> our fantastic Marianne, who's done a great job for us this year, as she's done several years for us. How many years have been doing this? Well, it'll be 11 in February. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> so I'm asking her to put it actually on the agenda so that. Yeah. So that, so that uh, everybody that comes in has the pretty, pretty, yeah. yeah, and specifically Evan will know that he needs to get her done. Hey, and how about you know with engineers that don't come before us frequently, so they will know what we require. Yeah, I it should be in writing and so and here's yeah. and Jonathan brought this up and I think he's hundred percent correct. So on that list, it should say pre, um, um, lot coverage. Um, <coughs> um, utilizing uh, land subject to uh, conservation jurisdiction, and then the next one down, lot coverage not using. Yeah. So that way we know he's taken or she has yeah. taken into effect. We know exactly what it is. Yeah. So, and we've also asked, and, and it probably should be stated, that we want to see structure coverage. <coughs> so there should be three things structure coverage, lot coverage, not utilize, utilizing land. That is controlled by that is in conservation jurisdiction, which is 13140, and then the last one would be lot coverage, excluding that, which is the way we need to utilize it. Land subject to coastal flowage. Say again. BVD. Shouldn't it be structure yes. coverage? That's what with I'm saying. Yes. Yes. We want to make sure that's in there because right now we do not know thing, if the right? person that comes in here that says lot coverage is 14 percent, if they're doing it correctly. Yeah. We don't know that. We don't. And that's what came to my head so many times tonight. And we, we can't do it. No. no it's, that's, We're just guessing. Yeah. So, I mean, the bottom line is we need to have those. And so that the engineer preparing this says, why do they want it? Oh, that means that they have to exclude that land. Yes, that's true. So if a, if a, lot, if a house is in a flood zone today, that it's 100%. Then you have zero, zero, zero. You have zero, zero loss. So it would be 100 and then zero. That's what... Evan is saying in reference to one of the lot applications I get it. I get tonight. It. I get it. A whole lot. There's so there's nine, no lot. Yeah. There's no lot. Thirty seven Nick and ninety right. pump and SNI. So technically some people are trying to split two lots, but there's no lot there's no land in that lot. Because it's in flood. It's in flood. <laughs> we knew when this wow. this judge made this decision that you couldn't include that. I said to many people at the building department. <laughs> What are you going to do with a lot that is totally not built on yet, but totally in floodplain? That means it has no area at all. No, Does that mean nothing. it can never be built on? That's what it's have to come here. That's for sure. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. They'd right. have to come here, and they're asking for a pretty heavy lift. My point is, is well, they'd have to go to conservation too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you get there, but I think somebody did some research, and there was like five or ten lots in our community. But still, you don't want to be an owner of one of those lots in New Seabury on the ocean that's worth X amount of dollars. It's not buildable anymore. Right. But that's not a determination we made. That was no. that was a that was judge. a judge who made that decision, and we have to we have to follow it. It's that simple. And we need to make sure that these these engineers that are drafting these site plans follow it. You know, I think the way to do that is, is uh, you and John suggest, right. if, if everything is there that the engineers need to give us, then we're all no, dealing from the same deck right. all the time. And right now, we don't have that. Right. I agree. Don't we need to know what the structure size is without the, uh, 
without without the the, the uh, land subject right the coastal structure. Structure. see I think you need three structure structure size because that was the only we used to do yeah. it yeah. right yeah. lot lot Percent. structure Percent. coverage Percent. structure coverage then in our own mind we can see what are these people doing yeah. are they doing mega mansion type yeah. of thing? and then the next one's got to be lot coverage using total lot area and then the last one is lot coverage not using any land subject to conservation control or 131.40. Yeah. And that's the three criteria we need. And that'll give us the ability to say, this person did it right. Yep. And then we need a fourth one, which would be structure within the, the last comment you made, the last area. No, because that really has no bearing on us anymore because it converted to lot coverage it's, I'd have to show you on a plan, okay. but it, we don't need it, but I'd, love to, it? Right. I'd love to show it to you on a plan. It's, it gets convoluted. Yeah. <laughs> Something you need structure, you need a structure before, you know, before you consider all the other right. elements, and then you need structure with everything out of it. You could add that, but I think I could show you on paper where you wouldn't need it. Okay. But more than happy to show that to you. Because I actually did it, I was going to, to actually give a presentation to this board when this thing came from the judge on all the ramifications that could be had about the decision that this gentleman made and how it's going to affect applicants coming in front of this board. It was, it was encompassing. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. It's really, it's, it's crazy. But, and we're starting to deal with it now. You're going to see a lot more of it. Through today. Right? Yeah, you're going to see a lot more of it. It's like, you know, a, a lot that's totally in a floodplain. There's no land in that lot. It's not an existing building, so you really can't build well, it. The, yeah. the, the desirable land is the land that's close to the water, and the lands that are close to the water presents that problem. For yeah, us. they're in floodplains, and yeah. you know, it's a two-sided sword. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, we... All right. Well, I'd like to get a motion to con re, uh, to Ooh, convene that we adjourn to whenever we're supposed to do it again. Second. Exactly. Exactly. Second. I like that. Moment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Thank you.